For at TV, the world is thinking. So technology fits well with our self-determination, but here's some data that we were able to get, you know, looking at it right there, you can see the Black Hills of South Dakota there on that, on that left edge of that photo there. But it, to us, it gives us the sense of who we are because we were a natural people that evolved out of that Black Hills, but we see the world in itself as we still identify with uh, Mother Earth that same way and then as a system. When I first seen the picture of the globe, it was a beautiful thing to see it without any kind of jurisdictional boundaries. You know, so pictures like this really enforce our philosophy about being part of the land and seeing the systems of the clouds, the water, all the essence of what creation really was and how it was given to us and where we emerge from. So it's a very powerful picture when we talk to our youth about what we can see from space. It's almost a God's eye view of what we were given. Now this is a very iconoclastic map that I uh, came up with. In fact, ASPERS, I don't know if anybody knows who ASPERS is, the American Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing. Cass Green, when she's seen my map here, uh, She's one of the presidents of Aspers. I did a presentation at Aspers last uh, winter, uh, last, last November, but she wanted to include this, this, this imagery in, in their handbook because it makes that point about ground truthing. <clears throat> As Lars was saying, these things have no application if you're sitting there at your computer and this data's on a hard file and, and yet you're trying to communicate and show, but you gotta really know what's going on in the ground. Well, this map was drawn in the 1890s by Amos Badhart Bull. And this was an image taken from the space shuttle by another Native American astronaut, John B. Harrington, in 2002. So here we have two Native people looking at the globe. But this man, he knew everything about that land, and yet he was able to project himself up at the same scale and produce a map at the same scale of what was taken from the space shuttle. That, to me, is really amazing how our native people were able to have that dimension to look at their land from space, but yet know everything about it, the cultural features and all that. So to me, when I seen this, I, I know this land very well. This is our, where we emerged from, the Black Hills of <laughs> South Dakota. And what's really an emphasis here that nobody really sees is the hydrology, where that water percolates right out of the, uh, the Black Hills and hydrates the, the plains and all that goes into the White River, to the Cheyenne River, to the Missouri River and to the Mississippi, you know, so you, you see just part of a working system here. But this is a really kind of, a, kind of an eye-opener. I call it very iconoclastic. You know, look the way our people used to really see things. And we also had our cartographic uh, traditions as well. <clears throat> but other points of interest that we have for the features, all these are sacred sites on the Black Hills, but we have a way of connecting that with the constellation in the sky. So we have a constellation that actually points to all these things. So we have a reference to not just the land we live on, but also to the cosmos and, the, and, to, the, and to the stars. And there again, we identified all these sacred sites with this map that uh, Amos Badhart Bull. And so we have them identified. And we have students really right now that are working on place names in our language. So that's really kind of a language preservation project in itself as well. So anyway, there's the Black Hills. So we're utilizing technology in any way we can to really kind of keep our culture. <laughs>